Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The summary and peace out to the rest of you. Black heart, black mind, black in. Hit the share button. The message is more important than the messenger. So share this one. Listen up closely. Um, because this one is going to be about who we leave behind. And I want to uh, thank Fantastic, uh, Mr. Fantastic, for covering uh, that Scared Straight 1999 episode where um, the guy missing the teeth was really giving it to the kids and telling them, we will rape all of y'all in here. And then he turned to the black student and said, we'll get you too, just like we'll dog out this white guy. Have both of y'all on the stroll, no matter what kind of Malcolm X and black history books you read. We'll get all of you. Don't think just because you're black, you ain't going to get it. It is very true that there is a criminal culture. We've made the mistake of assuming that black culture is hood culture. As a people, we've made that mistake. This has led to two extremes. It has led to people from the hood saying that we're the authentic Negroes. We're the only ones that are really authentically black because we come up in the hood with all the negative stereotypes. And then the opposite extreme is black elitism. Now, we've already had the discussion, and I'm with those who say we're going to have to leave behind uh, the ones that believe that uh, the so-called criminal culture is black culture. For one, criminal culture is not the same as just living adapted to life in the hood. Being able to defend yourself in the hood does not mean you are a criminal. Being a criminal does not mean you are a violent criminal. Being a criminal of Financial opportunity does not mean that you are an inherently evil person. It means you're poor, you're trying to make some money, and you'd ra you would love to not look the worst and feel the worst because you starve and, and you got to wear the worst clothes that don't even keep you warm. That's different. I understand that. And I would say that when you got nonviolent people that have, done, that have uh, uh, they're in, in jail for things they've done, um, that are not violent. I'm all for them um, having another opportunity. But when you've got people that resorted to violence and it was not self-defense, I'm not for them. I'm not for walking up and saying, here's your second chance. What I am for is them demonstrating that they're going to take that second chance. Remember, Malcolm was a criminal, but Malcolm was not violent. I guess he could fight, but he didn't start fights. That was never the issue with him. It was always nonviolent stealth robberies. They didn't tie up people uh, when they found them at home. They looked for homes that were empty at the time. And they were doing this in, in the Depression era. As a matter of fact, remember, Malcolm played crazy so that he would not be sent to fight uh, in the military. Remember that. Malcolm... He saved violence for when he was attacked and he didn't get attacked until shortly. His house was not even bombed until shortly before he got killed. And they knew when they decided to kill Malcolm, they knew they couldn't just terrorize him, slap him around a little bit. So they were going to have to kill him the first time. And they did. Understand that. Now, I have the Malcolm X standard for reform, by which we determine if we're going to take somebody with us. How similar is this situation to that of Malcolm X's reformation? And part of that is the lack of violence in the past. The other part of that is a 180 degree turn in one's attitude towards academics. Now, it doesn't mean they got to say, I like physics. Maybe you don't. But the basic is literacy in your first language. And some of you cats that be writing to me and you agree with me. Some of y'all that support me, y'all are behind me 100 percent are illiterate. Doesn't mean I hate you. Doesn't mean I don't appreciate the support. I'm simply saying that this standard is something that can be applied equally. You may support me. You may back me up, but you don't actually change my mind or sway me with anything because you can't spell and you can't punctuate. So I appreciate the support. But really, I would rather support you in that case. Now, this being said, black folk, the bombshell I wanted to drop on you was this. As I said, 
There are two extremes, extreme reactions to this assumption that we make. That not even just hood life, which is not the definition of black culture, but specifically criminal life. Bout it is, if you want to call it that. <laughs> um, is the standard for black culture and black authenticity. That, that assumption has resulted in two extremes, as I mentioned. And the black elitist also has to go. See, the black person with a standard is not the threat. The problem is that that mindset is utilized as a stepping stone to the opposite extreme, which is the black elitism. Rather, black anti-black elitism. It is when black folks uh, uh, take on the notion that anything except that which is elite by white standards is uh, unacceptable. Yeah, anything not elite by white standards, they take on a completely white worldview and they're ready to uh, even so much as completely decimate the black population. Long as they don't get caught doing it. Sometimes we refer to them as the boule. Now, that's a conspiracy theory. I'm not exactly sure uh, how true it is that the boule are just there to hurt us and help mass to keep the rest of us down. I, I don't know. That could be true. It could be false. I'm not trying to figure all that stuff out. What I do understand is that I understand this very clearly. There are black folks who have internalized um, anti-blackness as a reaction to the assumption that criminal negative culture is the certificate of authenticity for black folks. This was created the ones that say, yeah, nigga, I keep it real. I keep, no, I keeps it real. And they only define that by doing dumb shit. And the opposite. The opposite is the one that realizes uh, somebody is speaking AAVE to another African-American and then says, you low life, second class niggas. You embarrassments to us. They exist. And it's a thin line. It's hard to tell because in uh, at times in the hood, you've got people that they survive. They can live in the hood. And uh, before you know what, they're not if they're doing dirt, they definitely ain't hurting anybody. They may survive. They may not even survive by doing dirt. They they got a way to make it without having to do any dirt, um, but they can kick your behind if they need to. You got cats like that. They're not part of the criminal crowd. But it's easy to confuse them if you don't know. And on the flip side, you've got people that come up upper middle class and they're not part of the sellout crowd. But it's easy to confuse them if you don't know that environment quite well. I grew up upper middle class. I'm not that way now, but I grew up upper middle class. <laughs> yes, Jack and Jill, my mother's still a member of Smart Set and Lynx. All of that. I didn't get to bring my kids up in Jack and Jill, though. Because to this day in Jack and Jill, only the mothers join, the fathers don't. Now, I can say that looking back, it was good that I had those environments as an alternative to other environments in which we get together, find out that we are the majority, and then decide we don't know how to act anymore. That does exist. So I got a chance to see the alternative. But as someone that grew up this way, I'm going to tell you that I got to throw class bias aside in order to be fair and just to you. So just like some people who came out of bad uh, uh, zip codes or rough zip codes or just deprived zip codes will tell you there is a criminal element that we got to throw the F out and it does exist. And it could be he just rapping about it, but he won't condemn it. To throw this nigga out to I'm a psycho killer I'll cut your arms off and eat it when niggas start rapping that psycho stuff like what we used to say the black folks didn't do th them niggas gotta go to for rapping about it we can't take them with us if we're gonna build Zamunda and Wakanda they can't come until they do a 180 degree turn and sometimes it is composed of two 90 degree turns one 90 degree turn to get off the path you're on and another one when you get to the path that is correct, take another 90 degree turn to get into the right direction. That does exist. But by the same token, 
we can't take them jungle bunnies with us. Because you put a Tarzan movie on and they think that their ancestors were the ones chasing Tarzan trying to eat him. They believe that. So they act it out. We can't take them jungle bunnies with us. They've internalized the jungle bunny. Somebody else's idea, matter of fact, an enemy's idea of what they wish our ancestors had been so they could justify what they did to us to live a life of leisure, which all of them didn't even get to live, becomes our internalized image at times. And those folks who have internalized that can't come with us, let alone if they internalize the black brute. Uh uh. But I got to put my class bias aside and admit that they got some folks that they may they may not even be up a middle class, but they got that sellout mentality. We got to throw them niggas out, too. They can't come with us. And that includes, uh, I hate to say it, a lot of us don't understand us, but that includes Republicans. We can't take Candace with us. She's right about, uh, uh, to a certain extent, the dysfunction present amongst a lot of us. But Sergeant Willie Pete is also correct. White supremacy is a thing. It has, in fact, impoverished black people systemically. So that the black person that ain't poor is the exception and the white person that is poor is the exception. And, and we suffer the same dysfunction for many times even less than the poor whites. They come up hard. They got it bad. And daddy could be banging out the daughter. So I'm just going to call it what it is. So since you have things like this going on, when people are poor and they are deprived... I say it's financial for the most part. It really is. And I'm not going front. You see, elitism amongst us also leads to a different type of crime. It just leads to more white collar crime. I know a man went to an HBCU, really proud of that. He moved to my hometown from Atlanta. He did this a long time ago. And we kind of wonder what would make him do it. Well, it turned out he got this job with a black owned bank. There are a few of them along the Gulf Coast. So he got a job with one of the black owned banks along the Gulf Coast. And you know what he's, you know what he did? This cat set up here and started siphoning money off of uh, customers. He was faking loans that some of the customers account holders never even applied for. He would put, get, he'd get their signatures off the signature cards that they signed to open up the bank accounts and transfer them to loan applications. He would then give them the loans. They didn't know nothing about it. He'd take that money himself. He was you doing this to steal money. And he had dirt on the owner because when, the, when, when these people found out that there was an existing loan in their name that... Um, they never take and they would say, uh, I, I have an account, but I never applied for a loan. The owner would say, oh, you, you did this and you're going to pay this money back. He didn't want to go after uh, this gentleman that moved in from Atlanta. He didn't want to go after him for this. That means that that guy had some dirt on him. I don't know what it is and I don't care. What I do know is that this guy was and he wasn't even really that much of an elitist. He wasn't even that bad of an elitist. I mean, he wasn't really an elitist if you think about it. But he still was willing to commit these crimes out of greed. Black elitists usually do suffer from greed. So imagine if he'd been a, a black elitist, meaning an anti-black but still black elitist. Don't get it twisted. We can't take them with us either. They got to be left behind. We don't have a choice. It is for our safety. They must be left behind. Just as much. And I don't even know which standard of reform to tell you about them. I'm really not sure. I mean, and, and to be honest with you, if they if they became Muslim and they were seriously practicing Islam, I'd be willing to give them a shot. But that's with an extra supervision, like a probation. I, I myself would. But I can't guarantee you. Uh, it's like an experiment we'd have to run. Studies we'd have to uh, perform and keep track of and see how it works because I don't know what would happen. They usually don't accept any religion, really. Least of all Islam, because the punishment for stealing like that in those amounts when you're not pressed by hunger is a uh, manual amputation. It may not be the law of the land where you live, but to be a Muslim, you have to believe that this is the punishment that such thieves deserve. So if you become that type of thief, you have to accept that you actually deserve that kind of punishment. 
And that's a hard thing for people to say, I deserve retribution for bad things I've done. Most people don't do that. People who are capable of doing that usually decide I'm not, gonna, I'm not going to deserve that retribution. I'm not going to behave in such a way that I would deserve it so that I don't deserve it. And then others who would never say that they deserve it no matter what will turn around and do it because they still just they just told themselves they don't deserve it no matter what they do. That's a different story. But we got to leave all we got to leave both of them behind. We, we can't take them with us. We just can't. Sorry. I can look at a black upper middle class neighborhood and say this is also our culture. I could say that. By the same token, man, let me just tell you. Um, I, I also have to look at the, the at people who maybe don't socialize with the rest of black folks that live in these areas, but they may occupy those zip codes. And actually, they probably wouldn't even occupy them. But I would have to look at some people who, who do come from there that still have these attitudes. You could ask why they don't just live in a white zip code. I don't know, but I can look at them and I can say, this is somebody we can't take with us. Thanks for listening. The blackest of the black sun and black out. Aslam Lakum. And black patriarchy until extinction or judgment day. Just because they don't like it.